We are still with Tamba, full face view of him, still sitting in the tree, still nervous about these lines, still indecisive as to what to do. Now, I, I'm told that James was busy speaking about male lions and how they tolerate cubs, and it's in stark contrast to, uh, is he going to jump down? It's in stark contrast to how Tumba would have experienced his father. Um, lions are social species that are contact species, and although the males are in their own mission most of the time, they will tolerate their cubs jumping on them, and with a bit of a growl and a hiss and a snarl, they'll accept a bit of bullying and a bit of play wrestling. Male leopards, on the other hand, have a much more subtle relationship with their father. You will very rarely, it does happen, but you'll very rarely see them in even the same proximity as one another. And they absolutely won't tolerate uh, a young male leopard being a bit boisterous and playful with their father. That does not happen. So he would have, this young male leopard would have grown up knowing, um, I think at an instinctual level, who his father is because adult male leopard don't tolerate youngsters. and. And I, I, I struggle to believe that male leopard do not know who their offspring are and do not keep in contact with them. I think they absolutely do. I just think it's at a more remote, aloof, uh, in a more remote and aloof way. Um, so a very different experience is my point, I think, between male leopard and, and, and male lion and, and, and in the way that they treat and in return are treated by their cubs. Um, I think it just sort of adds to the mystery and the romance of a leopard though, and to the power and the majesty of a lion. Penny Pine, would a lion chase this leopard up a tree? Um, male lion, full grown male lion, no, they're a little bit too, they do climb trees, but a small tree like this, a full grown male lion would stand at the bottom, perhaps growl a bit maybe try and jump up a bit, but I, he'd be a little bit too big, I think, to get to Tama. A, a sub-adult male lion? Yep, potentially. A lioness? Yes, potentially. Um, generally, what you'll do is you'll see sub-adults, like, you know, two and a half, three years old, pursue leopard up into trees, both male and females. But adults on both sides, they won't waste too much of their time. This leopard will climb right up to the top of that tree. So this leopard has the capacity and the ability to climb right into the very top branches of that tree and will do so, standing on the thinnest branches, spreading his weight out. I've seen it on numerous occasions. And will be way out of the reach of lion, especially a tree like this that doesn't offer good purchase for their claws and bark flakes off and no horizontal branches. Um, so lions would lose interest pretty quick. If they could get to this leopard and kill it, they will. Um, I think they would prefer that there was some kill there. I think the greater incentive would be that there was some meat to gather from the tree. If there was a kill here, then they would make a more concerted effort. Oh, look there now, he's busy stretching out on that branch. I think he's getting a little bit agitated with... Look at that. It's a lovely screenshot there. So, take away. It's not often you get to see leopard doing that. You see that poor structure. Where are you going? I think he's going to want to climb down. He's not very comfortable. Let's see what he's going to do. Are you going to go up higher or are you going to come down, boy? Come down. No, no, no. Don't get stuck up there at night time. <laughs> Another fantastic picture of his two legs in the front there. He's definitely not comfortable, and I think his youthful exuberance now, his fear is over. He's realizing that he's not being pursued and hunted by these lions, although every single second he stays in this tree and in this proximity, he runs the risk of the breeze wafting his scent onto the lion. Currently the breeze is coming from basically behind him and behind the lion and wafting diagonally across from them, so there's no ways that the lion can smell him right now. But you never know what an errant current would do. And these lions would definitely react to a leopard being so close to them, absolutely. Where is he going now? Up to the top? Oh. I think he's chosen the height route. 
over the creating distance route and I think that that's testimony to how young and inexperienced he is. An older leopard would have assessed the situation and then climbed down and created distance. That's the only safe thing to do around lion. This youngster is, is increasing his risk exponentially every second he stays in this proximity. Darlene, you've asked if Tumba sees some prey, would he stay put or go after it? Ooh. Darlene, I think you'll probably stay put with an increase in agitation. Um, the reason for that is he's going to be and is aware of these lions right here. And they represent a much greater threat currently to his safety than, uh, than hunger does right now. And you can see the way he's lifting his head and having a good look at what's going on. That he is just choosing the safe option. He's probably going to wait here until the lions move off, which is a couple of hours. He loses nothing but a couple of hours of patrolling. Um, and at least he gets to know what these cats are up to. You know, you can almost feel the indecision. He just doesn't have the experience. He lacks the experience. He lacks mom. Uh, her name is Tandy. He lacks mom's wisdom in this particular, you know, scenario. He's trying to get comfortable. He knows the top of the tree is the safe place instinctively. He can see the lines from where he from where he is. He knows that as a cub, the safest bet was you climb to the toppest branch and you stay there. And you wait there until mom comes and fetches you or the lions move away. And I think we're just seeing the tail end of that experience, that sort of inbred genetic experience coming through. And it's lovely to see, actually. There's very few things of this size in the world that, uh, that you can basically watch the, 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 the workings of the mind uh, of an intelligent being and you can see and feel the indecision. And as Megan has just said, this pose is just classic. <laughs> what are you doing, Wei? You're trying to look relaxed and charming, but... Yeah, he's looking at me now balefully with his eyes, staring at me. I may not insult him. He's old enough to understand an insult <laughs> before going back to his... ...watching awareness. It's been a fairly hot day. The clouds are coming over now and it's uh, it's starting to cool down. It's definitely the, the day's lost its, its edge and lions will start to wake up and stretch around sunset which is still an hour or so away now tomorrow is an hour ahead of us and so much closer to sunset and so our cats that uh, the rest of my friends are sitting with are a little bit more active than these ones are. So why don't you can have a look at Scott's cheetah who are starting to become active for their evening.